So I first met Ed in the summer of 1976. We came to the caucus, remember at that time, it's, it's really still a very embryonic organization, only three, four years old. There were no role models really for the Asian Law Caucus of how to do community lawyering and tenants had complained at the Ping Yuan project, housing project in Chinatown, about their conditions. They included not having lighting in the hallways, the elevators were broken, um, not feeling safe in the place, and a young woman who was 19 years old who lived in the projects, unfortunately she was attacked by uh, several uh, gang of boys who um, assaulted her, sexually assaulted her, and raped her and threw her body from one of the top floors into the courtyard of, of the projects. This angered the tenants uh, and that really got them rallying to demand better conditions in the, in the projects. And Ed was their main organizer and the link between the caucus and the tenants. For someone like Ed to come out of Bolt and have the kind of legal skills that he had, to be able to be bilingual, bicultural, and to understand the complexities of what it is to really create change. The, the Ping Yu and the first you know, tenant strike of its kind, but, but not to just work, think about that in isolation, but to think about, so then what do we need to build? And so the, the Chinatown Tenants Association, the Coalition for uh, Better Housing, all of those were infrastructure that did not exist until Ed and other community, community leaders worked together and built shared power, shared leadership to be able to, to build that. I came to the caucus thinking that I was going to be writing all these briefs and making, you know, helping to draft motions and I ended up that summer uh, chasing Ed all over Chinatown, going to meetings, going to protests, going to demonstrations and it was something that I didn't realize that this is part of being uh, uh, an attorney, but for Ed, uh, that's exactly what he did. If you think of that picture of Ed standing on the steps of City Hall uh, with the residents of Ping Yuan, you see that he's standing in partnership with folks, and that's who Ed was. I mean, he knew that you, don't, you can't do anything alone. This is really like his lasting legacy is that strategic understanding of what it was, what it takes to really create change. And it's not just one legal case. The voices of impacted communities absolutely had to be in the mix, at the forefront of whatever change we were trying to create. And so Ed deeply believed in that. That's the Ed I knew who tried to get money in the pockets of businesses owned by Latinos, African Americans, women, and Asian Americans, and someone who fought to desegregate the San Francisco Fire Department. I have to keep coming back to the point that he was a good person, because sometimes you'll be in coalitions with people who you'd like to slap, who are you know on the right side but aren't aren't good people. And he was a good person. They used to call him, you know, the unofficial mayor of Chinatown when uh, we were working together, uh, but. I really believe that if you asked Ed now, if he were here and you asked him, did you ever think you'd be the, the mayor of San Francisco? Uh, I know he would, he would say no. Many people were critical of decisions that he made as mayor. That's going to come to anybody. You're not going to please everybody. But Ed embodied the spirit of being a public servant. He really modeled a way to stay involved with organizations that are meaningful to you, even if you can't be on the front lines, you know, there's a way for you to give back. He has a legacy as a father and as a husband, as a friend, as somebody who made the Asian Law Caucus vibrant, as someone who worked in coalition with other people. I knew him as a warrior for justice and for progressive values. He was someone who came um, out of the community very much came from you know, all of us, uh, believed in a social justice movement, acted on that belief, took that into the office of mayor, and did what he thought was right. So there's a wonderful quote from Yuri Kochiyama, tomorrow's world is yours to build. If we really believe 
that that world that we want to see is possible, we gotta work hard at building it today. And so while it's inspirational, it's also a call to action for all of us. And really, Ed, Ed really exemplified that.